the Himalayas, ageless, serene. Yet how many of us have explored the valleys mothered by these proud mountains? Valleys whose history is an integral part of the story of this subcontinent. Two such valleys north of the Punjab are among the most famed, Kangra and Kulu. The Kangra Valley is at peace now, but these forts are pointers to a turbulent past. No one lives in them now. No soldiers guard their entrances and no darbars are held there. Yet, only a hundred years ago, they were the nerve centers of this lyrical land, a lyricism which finds expression in the great school of Pahari painting. On the fringe of the valley stands a famous temple. There are no immortal images here, only an immortal flame, which, legend says, emerges from the fiery mouth of the goddess Jwalamukhi. Beyond the verdant valley, rising abruptly, are the mountains of the Daladhar range, or the White Ridge. They span the entire length of the valley from west to east, feed the rivers with their snows, bring fertility to the soil. The Kangra Valley is well known for its rich paddy fields and its sprawling tea gardens. Life in the villages on the foothills is simple. The Dogras and the Gaddis, the two communities which inhabit the valley, work hard to provide themselves with all that they need. Leisure is well spent in the pursuit of beauty, beauty which makes life serene and satisfying. The Gaddis are essentially shepherds, not typical nomads, but people who lead an outdoor life searching for pastures, roaming the neighboring hills and valleys, living and eating wherever their sheep happen to be. From Kangra on to Kulu, the road cut through solid granite enters the narrow gorge of the Bias River. For 12 miles, the road hugs the mountainside, winding and twisting. Soon, the rugged mountains open, and there, before us, is the lush valley of the gods, Kulu, some 40 miles long and between 1 to 2 miles wide. At the entrance to the valley is the renowned temple of Basheshwar Mahadev at Bajara. Beyond Bajara, the fertile valley, covered with paddy fields and fruit orchards. Ringed by towering peaks, in the center of the valley lies the main town, Kulu. Twenty-three miles beyond is Manali, the most important market for trade and commerce in the valley. The valley, as it were, meets here. Pine and the other forests abound. Manali is proud of her stately trees close against the sky. High above the valley, the shepherds graze their sheep. Hemraj, the shepherd boy, is one of many. Down below in the valley, his village home, a pleasant place, a place of peace. Not far away, Bhante, the village bell, takes out her cattle. It's like any other day, but... For some time now, preparations have been going on for Hemraj's marriage to Bhante. The auspicious day. The bride is prepared for the elaborate day-long ceremonies. The bridegroom and his party are ready to leave for the bride's house. 
the groom's sister offers Arti the traditional blessing. The marriage procession is on its way. The bride's mother welcomes the young man who comes to take her daughter away. According to custom, the bride, heavily veiled, is carried by her maternal uncle. The marriage ceremony is held under a specially erected mandap. The holy fire is witness to the marriage and offerings are made to it. Kanyadan, the father gifts his daughter. They walk round the holy fire seven times and they are man and wife. The days pass. In the valley the paddy is ripe for harvesting. Months of toil await fulfillment. In accordance with age-old custom, the farmers collect in the temple courtyard to seek divine guidance in fixing the harvesting day. On the appointed day, the oldest man in the village goes to the fields, offers flowers and prayers to nature and her bounty. And he who has seen more harvest than any other cuts the first stalks. Newly married couples follow. It is their first harvest together and the promise of many more. The first cuttings will be offered to the family deity. Then and only then do the people of the Kulu Valley begin the gathering of the new crop. From the fields, the menfolk visit the temples and shrines and make their offerings. Meanwhile, the women thresh the paddy, prepare for the harvest feast. The paddy is roasted in a common kitchen. This has been so for as long as one can remember. In the evening, the freshly harvested paddy is cooked in every home. It is said by some that each harvest of paddy has its own flavor. It is autumn time now and preparations for the winter have to be made. Soon the streams and rivers will freeze, so the women take their turn to grind the grain in the local water mill. It is an ingenious device and very simple to work. The hunt for wood, fodder and grass is important. Stocks must be built up to cover the winter months. The wind is awake. Winter is on its way. And then the snow, the beautiful snow, filling the sky and the earth below. But the business of living goes on, as always. Even the sheep must be taken out and fed. The long winter hours are employed profitably. Some weave the famous Kulu shawls. Others spin yarn or yarns by the fireside. But for the kids, it's time for the snowman, and there is no stopping them in their fun. Now, the snow line on the mountains begins to recede. Spring is bursting through. And with spring comes new life.
Once more, the shepherds are on the move with their flocks, looking out for fresh, untouched pastures. Once again, the farmers turn to their fields, which must now be prepared for sowing. The digging begins like this, with spades, just as their fathers did and their forefathers before them. When the summer comes, the passes to other valleys open. Sheep and mules laden with cloth, salt, sugar and spices trudge across the Rotang Pass on to Lahol and Spiti, on the other side of the mountain. From there they will bring back wool and kut, an important medicinal herb. And when the monsoon rains have fallen, it is time to harvest the apples for which Kulu is famed. The valley is indeed India's fruit orchard. Apples of all varieties and persimmon. The way of life is well ordered in these mountain regions in tune with the coming and going of seasons. <laughs> Now it is festival time. Everywhere families are preparing to join the Dasera celebrations. All over the valley, deltas, images of the local deities, are taken out of the village temples and brought in colorful procession to the ancient town of Kulu. With each hour, the throng swells. All the deertas are here, following the chariot of Raghunathji. He is the presiding deity of the valley. These celebrations recall the story of the Ramayana, of the triumph of good over evil. There are meetings between the Deatas, warm embraces. A whole year has passed since they last met. The Valley of the Gods in full array. The Gods and their people, together, inseparable.